Welcome once again to the multi-part series on best practices for building Gen AI applications on AWS. In this video, I will show you how I improved my rack system with a metric-driven development approach and how you can do it too. My name is Felix Hutmacher and I'm a AWS solutions architect covering Gen AI. We all know that retrieval, augmented generation or short rack is an extremely useful paradigm for augmenting LLMs with custom data. It enables the LLM to present accurate, relevant information with source attribution, which not only increases trust, but also unlocks a variety of use cases. For example, here in our notebook, it enables businesses to automate information extraction from 10K documents, which then can be used downstream for further analysis. Unfortunately, unlike for LLMs, there are no benchmarks or leaderboards for an entire rack system or its components, and this can make it difficult to assess with which components and configuration to start with or what to optimize when working with an existing rack system. And to make matters worse, there are many factors that can impact the performance of the rack system, and that is why it's crucial to have a systematic evaluation approach. Without it, a change in one part of the system, for example, the chunk size that determines how uh, a source tax is stored in the knowledge base, could have an unintended impact on other parts of the system that could go unnoticed. And fortunately, we don't have to create a new evaluation framework from scratch. Rather, we can use an existing open source framework, such as Retrieval Augmented Generation Assessment, or RAGUS, as it is more commonly known. RAGUS is an evaluation framework to quantify the performance of the RAG system across different metrics. It includes metrics covering a wide variety of use cases and enables a metric-driven development approach if those metrics are tracked in experiments over time. This notebook outlines how to improve retrieval performance systematically by leveraging the metrics that Dan covered in the previous video, which was context precision, context recall, faithfulness, answer relevancy, and answer correctness. If you're not familiar with these metrics, then I definitely recommend to watch that video first, but I've also included some brief descriptions here in the notebook itself. For now, let me just say that if you've been in IT for a while, then you're familiar with the saying garbage in, garbage out. The same is true for a rack system, then the retrieval part is not working well, there is no relevant context to give to its LLM component, and as a result, you will be less likely to get a meaningful response. And this is why for our information extraction use case, we evaluate and prioritize the metrics in the following order, context recall, context precision, faithfulness, answer relevance, and then answer correctness. The solution architecture is still largely the same as in the previous videos. We primarily use a notebook environment here for illustration. We use code editor hosted in SageMaker Studio to interact with Amazon Petrock which gives us access to dozens of LLMs as a service. And in production, you would typically embed this evaluation in a pipeline to ensure continuous evaluations for every change. We will link this repo in the description below so you can get started quickly. And not only does this repo include a step-by-step -step instructions on how to get started, but it also includes infrastructure as a code with CloudFormation so if you're locked in into your AWS management console and you have sufficient access, then you can just click on this button here and it will deploy everything for you. Once everything is deployed, you go into code editor in SageMaker Studio and do a git clone of this repository. 
And if you have a pre-existing vector store that you want to leverage, you can update the environment file here. And if you don't, you can just leave everything as is and jump right into this notebook. Here in this notebook, we first create a conda environment and install all of the dependencies. We load all of our environment variables here. You can see we have one environment variable here for MLflow to track our experiments over time. But to keep this simple, it's deactivated by default. So you can run this notebook without MLflow as well. Next, we download our crown truth dataset, which is still the same as in our uh, previous video. It is a set of about 20 question and answer pairs with relevant context. And I would definitely recommend to use a bigger crown truth data set for an actual production scenario. But more important than the number of questions is that it is a representative sample and that you get this framework in place. And then we download our data set an Amazon 10K report and read it into a list of strings, which is a sample document from which we want to extract the information from. Next, we create a vector database, in this case, open search serverless and uh, a bedrock knowledge base, which we will use in our evaluation. Once that is done, we define our prompt templates that we want to use for our evaluation. Here you can see we have two prompt templates, one with step-by-step -step instructions and another one with an example of a human assistant workflow. And now to simplify the evaluation, we created a few helper methods. We don't have time to go into the details of each of them, but the first one is to create a rack system on the fly for a given set of parameters. And the second one is actually a wrapper to work with raggers and the latest bedrock models. You could use Langchain here as well, but if you want to run Ragus evaluations with the latest and greatest LLMs, then it is easier to just create your own wrapper class. And it also gives you a bit more control. Here, for example, we capture the number of tokens used and we use that information to calculate cost. And then the last one is a helper class to simplify the experiments with Ragus for the given rag system. So now that we've covered the setup and our benchmark data set, let's talk about the experiment parameters. All the experiment parameters that we are trying to optimize are either based on how the source documents are represented in the vector database or how we search for them once they are stored in the vector database. And we perform the evaluation in stages so first we do tests to find the best chunk size. Then in the second series of tests, we identify the best performing text splitter for our data set. And then after we have identified the best performing text splitter, we use the best chunk size and text splitter to identify the best performing embedding model. And then we use the best performing embedding model to identify the best retriever method. And last but not least, we then use with the best retriever method, we evaluate the best prompt template for our rack system. So here uh, you can see how we are doing that. So in our first experiment, we use a token text splitter with a chunk size of 128 and a chunk overlap of 64. We use our rack system helper class to on, uh, create on the fly a rack system. And then we run our evaluation with the Ragus helper uh, class that we created earlier. And once this ran, we can not only see the average LLM uh, query time and the rack system cost for the LLM and embedding tokens but we can also see all of the Ragus metrics that we want to use in our comparison. 
Now you go ahead and actually run the same thing with chunk sizes like 250, 6, 512, and 1024. And when we compare and we can see that the 512 token chunk size performed best across our prioritized set of metrics. And then we essentially do the same with a recursive character text splitter. And here we look at chunk sizes of 1000, like here, and then a chunk size of uh, 1500, 2000, and 2500. And once again, once we run all of these, we can compare the results. And we can see that the recursive uh, character text splitter with a chunk size of 2500 performed best. And then we use the best recursive uh, character text splitter and best uh, token text splitter and compare those two against each other. And we can see that the token text splitter outperformed the character text splitter in context recall, which is in blue here. Now we want to look at different embedding models next. Here we compare Titan V1 and V2 against Cohere, Multilingual and English. And again, we run the same set of rack systems and then we can compare the results. And we can observe that the Cohere Multilingual uh, model performs very well, even at a significantly smaller token chunk size such as 350. And we can also see that the Titan V2 model is not only more cost effective, but also outperforms V1 in context precision and answer relevancy. Next, we look at different retriever types. Here, we compare the approximate nearest neighbor of uh, OpenSearch with the MMR uh, implementation of OpenSearch against a bedrock knowledge base retriever. And if I scroll to the results, you can observe that the bedrock knowledge base retriever, which is the green bar here, uh, performs very well with the default uh, settings and even outperforms uh, the other two retrieval options in context recall. And finally, we look at different prompt templates. We can see that our prompt uh, template two here performs slightly better than prompt template one. And prompt template two was the one that used basically the interactions between the assistant and human uh, to guide the LLM. In our benchmark here, a token text splitter with a chunk size of 350 worked well in combination with Cohere's embeddings model and also Amazon Bedrock's knowledge base retriever with Cohere's embedding model and default settings performed even slightly better across our prioritized Ragus metrics compared to our own open search retriever implementation with various chunking strategies and search types on this data set. But actually more important than the specific benchmark results here, we established that there is no one size fits all approach and instead demonstrated a metric driven development approach to optimize the retrieval performance of a rack system, which you can apply to your own data rack system and use case. And once again, we will link this notebook in the description below to get you started. And of course, there's a lot more that can be done in terms of the evaluation. And I included some thoughts on that here as well. Thank you for watching.